Hi class, welcome to this lecture on James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. Uh, it is not an understatement to say that James chapter 2, 14 through 26 is the most popular section of the entire letter of James. And you wonder if, if that wasn't in there, whether we would even pay as much attention to James as we do. And the reason chapter 2, 14 through 26 is so important is because it looks like this is exactly where James uh, attacks Paul or attacks uh, you know, people's understanding of Paul or the reports that James has received of Paul um, because he talks about faith and works. Um, and he uses Abraham as an example, as his proof text, uh, specifically uh, Genesis chapter 15, uh, I think verses 21 or 15, 6, and then chapter 22, the Akedah, where Abraham sacrifices Isaac. So these are incredibly important passages for James. Uh, it's his proof text uh, to argue that uh, faith without works is dead. He also talks about Rahab uh, at the very end of this section. So he uses two biblical characters to make his argument uh, in chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. That's fine and good. Um, but it really is important to look at Paul's arguments in, his, in two of his letters, specifically Romans chapter 3, verse 21 all the way through Romans chapter 5, verse 11. I think that segment is worth reading. You can read a little bit before then and a little bit after then. But uh, pay attention to Paul's argument here because Paul's arguing uh, that you, people are saved by faith alone, not by works of the law. Works of the law is, is important there. Uh, but even in his one of his first letters, Galatians, he makes this same argument. So look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 15, through chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, and look at the, part, part, the argument that Paul makes there really about uh, uh, faith and salvation coming through faith and faith alone, not by works of the law. He uses the same terminology in Galatians as he does in Romans. Galatians is an early letter of Paul. Romans is a later uh, letter of Paul. Uh, so these almost act as bookmarks to Paul's theology and, and Paul's uh, understanding of the gospel. Uh, in other words, this concept of being saved by faith alone, not through works of the law, this is something that was important to Paul in the very beginning of his ministry and functions all the way to the end of his ministry. Uh, in Romans. Romans may have been the last uh, letter that he wrote. So uh, look at those arguments and, and how Paul structured those arguments. Look at the vocabulary. And very specifically, in the Romans argument, look at Romans chapter 4, the whole chapter, verses 1 through 25, because that's the chapter where Paul speaks specifically about Abraham, okay? And he uses Abraham as an example of someone who is justified, that's the big word, justified by faith and not by works of the law. Uh, now, early, again, this is kind of his, his last letter, Th but this same character, this same verse is important to him early in his ministry in Galatians. Uh, and that, little se that big, larger section of Galatians, he speaks specifically about Abraham in chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. So I'm going to ask you to read Romans and Galatians very carefully, specifically where Paul mentions Abraham, and then come back to James and look at where J James's fuller argument, chapter 2, verses 14 through uh, 26, but, but look at where he uses Abraham. He uses Abraham in verses 21, 22, and 23. So uh, pay real close attention to that. Look at where, how they use the character uh, of Abraham uh, and then the, the, the verses that they pick up. So they're, they're playing on some of the same verses, and it's really important to, to pay attention to how these arguments uh, are kind of spread out. 
what comes before it, what comes after. And, and James says that Abraham is justified by his works, not by his faith. Uh, and, and he uses uh, the Akedah, the or Genesis chapter 22, this, the, the binding of Isaac, the sacrifice of Isaac, as a proof text that it's works that's important. I want you to look at this and determine whether you think these two are in dialogue with each other or how much of a dialogue they are in. James only talks about works. James never talks about works of the law. Luke Timothy Johnson makes a big deal out of this. This is the defining difference between Paul's argument and James's argument. So uh, pay real close to Read Johnson uh, carefully. Johnson makes really good arguments. I tend to disagree with him on this, uh, mainly because of what James has just said about the law. Uh, so uh, the law for James is uh, all important. If you break one, you break them all. Luke Timothy Johnson makes a distinction between works of the law and works here in James. He argues that James is when James uses works, he's, used, he's talking about moral behavior uh, and conduct, how you treat others. And Paul is talking about circumcision and very specific ritual law. Uh, read it for yourself. Determine whether you think these guys are in uh, dialogue or whether they're in conflict, whether they agree with each other, whether they disagree, if they disagree, where they disagree. Uh, pay attention to Galatians, Romans, and James. Uh, I'll come back in a next lecture and, and go verse by verse in, um, in James chapter 2, 14 through 26 and kind of pick this apart. From a post-colonial standpoint, I think he absolutely is engaging Pauline thought here, if not Paul in particular, and, and really trying to do something different than, than what he's heard. Uh, so in James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13, the opening of the body, there he's really coming out against Roman imperialism and, and arguing against the Roman patronage structure. And in this next section, he turns his attention to Pauline hybridity, uh, and, and the untenable position of faith without works. This is a total discrepancy for James. So read these texts for yourself. Uh, read what I've said about James in my book. Read Luke Timothy Johnson. Put them over against each other. Uh, and pay real close attention to Elsa Thomas, which that's a whole different kind of reading of this. So um, I hope this is informative for you. Um, I won't talk so much about Paul's stuff in the next lecture where I have the slideshow presentation. Uh, this is where I really I'm going to do most of that. So read Galatians, read Romans. Remember that Galatians is at the very beginning of Paul's, well, not at the very beginning of his ministry, but one of the first letters that he writes. Romans is one of the last letters he writes. So this concept of faith uh, alone it really kind of earmarks at Paul's entire ministry. It is kind of part and parcel uh, the nature of his gospel. And so uh, if this is the heart of Paul's gospel, is James's letter evidence that James is attacking the very core of Paul's gospel? And what does it mean to have two um, Christian leaders going at each other like this, knowing that James absolutely has more power during this time than Paul does? But Paul is out in the diaspora. Paul is traveling from place to place. In other words, Paul has more real presence with these congregations, although it's obvious that his, uh, his ministry is always contentious. Every, every letter he writes, it seems like he has opponents that have come to that congregation after the fact and are, and are like really uh, taking him on. So uh, Paul is an embattled apostle. James is somebody who is the leader of the whole Jesus movement in Jerusalem, uh, has the power to write edicts uh, like the letter itself and, and what we find in the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 15 and 21. Uh, so pay real close attention to this, the, the gospel that Paul is proposing in Galatians and Romans, and then look again at James. And, and even if you can, put them side by side to see how they may be interacting uh, and come to your own conclusions about this. I, I'm really excited to hear what you have to say, the way you think about these texts in particular, not just the people behind them, James or Paul, 
but the, what the text actually says in Galatians and Romans as opposed to uh, James chapter 2, 14 through 16. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email. Uh, I really enjoy getting some of your feedback and uh, look forward to hearing from you.